Joining us right now is Tom Tesoros. He is director of, and head of fixed income at Strategus Research Partners. Also, our own Mike Santoli is here as well. Um, Tom, let's start with you. What do you think? You think the Fed is done cutting rates for the year, or you think there's more to come? No, I think they've got one more to come. Uh, and I'd even go so far as to say I think there's a 50-50 chance that we get another one in December as well. But uh, I would definitely take exception with the argument that this was a hawkish Fed statement. Even the reaction in the two-year part of the curve doesn't necessarily say this was a hawkish statement uh, or a hawkish result from the Fed. I think the Fed delivered exactly what most folks expected the Fed to deliver, uh, and that yeah. is one cut and data dependence. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. That sounds like they were walking a pretty fine line. Mike, um, you pointed out earlier that every time the Fed has done what the market's expected, the market has been disappointed. This time, uh, the market was kind of stable. This time, we got the as-expected decision by the Fed, and the S&P was almost exactly flat on the day, which is almost uh, uh, ridiculous. Now, you sometimes do, the next morning, like today, get a little bit of a rethink and recalibration of exactly what was said. But I think that almost to, to kind of come at exactly the way Steve posed it from the other angle, mm -hmm. the stock market seemed to say, we're getting another cut unless the economy gets a good deal better. In other words, we don't need incremental weakness from here, but if we're not getting another cut, it probably means things improve from here or we got a trade deal or something. So it's the same point made from a different angle. It's kind of a, get a glass half you think full. That? You think the market has baked that in at this I point? I think that uh, yesterday's one? reaction implied that, right? Especially when you see the bond market did not really have a reaction that said um, that we're certainly getting more cuts. He priced out some certainty of, of, uh, of additional cuts. But yeah, if you look at the probabilities, Mike yeah. is right, um, uh, that there was a slight decline. I mean, yeah. within margins for of December, error. For December, you mean? But for, no, for, for October. Okay. A slight decline for December and a slight decline going into March. <laughs> the whole thing came down. The 10 basis points, not a huge deal in the two-year, but, you know, it's a two-year note. So the idea that they move by 10 basis points does suggest to me a little bit more hawkish read. And I think what Mike is saying is key here. The market took it okay, and the market has not taken this right. up, okay? And it may have been a change. I don't know if you noticed. Powell gave some of his answers, it looked like, from cue cards. That's what <laughs> Yellen did. That's what Yellen did. I know Janet Yellen was so insecure in her ability to ad lib that she had programmed out certain questions she was sure she was going to get from reporters. She had the answers in front of them. I think Powell. We believe in a strong dollar no, from, no, the exactly. from the Treasury's no, no, perspective. No, no. Exactly. <laughs> Things like that. Um, I, I think Powell was totally ready for the question on is this a mid cycle adjustment? Right. Um, I don't remember if he read from that. But the thing is that he, he's decided he doesn't want to leave it up to a whim anymore. He's going to be more precise with his language. And I think that he hit the right note there that allowed the, 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 the bond market to dial back just a little bit and the stock market to be cool with it. So, uh, Tom, I, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you wanted to see more from them. You wanted them to go all in, or am I misinterpreting what I read in the notes? Well, well we thought that the Fed should have gone 50 basis points in September, yeah. but we had no expectation that they would do that. And, and let me say what, what we interpret the bond market as saying. The bond market is telling the Fed what the path should be. That is, the bond market is guiding the Fed based on what the collective global investor base is saying the correct path of monetary policy should be. But the Fed does what it wants to do, and that's the reason why you're seeing the two-year yield rise a little bit after uh, Powell's statements and after the meeting. But the bond market's saying to the Fed, this is exactly where you should go, but the Fed does what it wants to. Tom, why 50, Tom? Why do you think the Fed should have gone 50? And I assume you think it definitely ought to go in October. What's the rationale behind it? Uh, great question. I'm glad you asked that. One of our differentiating views at Strategus is we believe that we don't believe that the Fed is running out of ammunition. That is, we don't believe that the Fed has a limited number of cuts, so they need to preserve them. Rather, what we believe is that those cuts become less and less effective the lower inflation goes. So by the time you see wages rolling over, it's too late. The Fed should have already cut by then. So we believe that to get ahead of that, to keep the, the, their ammunition effectively uh, useful, they need to make sure inflation doesn't roll over any further, and they need to get ahead of any rollover in wages. So we believe that the best way to do that is to more or less force steepen the yield curve. So if you're only cutting at a pace as fast as what the yield curve is suggesting or even slower, the yield curve is going to continue to generally flatten, as we saw yesterday with two-year yields pushing higher. And essentially, the monetary velocity or the credit channel uh, uh, impact from uh, liquidity shrinks. Uh, and that's the problem. Okay.